Here's your reminder that fat phobia is rooted in racism. Fat phobia is real. It should be illegal. Make it work. Make it work. The caption for this video, I need to remind you that all bodies are good bodies. I'm sorry if all bodies are good bodies and you wouldn't be dead. What's up everybody, my name is Amir Odom and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss someone getting misgendered at the airport and then we're gonna dive right into this fat positive movement. We've got Southwest giving out free seats, fat people wanting it to be illegal to call them fat. And then we're gonna talk about a fat positive influencer who unfortunately is now dead. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. What about when adult employee misgenders I'm you so intentionally? Sorry, while, she's talk, while he's talking, you're talking. You just misgendered me again. Yeah. Okay multiple times gotcha. to be fair that person the delta worker said he and the correct himself and said she so clearly you have someone who's irritated who could care less but they're trying and now you have the person who's videotaping this trans person whoever it may be and we're gonna dive into who this person is and if they look passing or not but they're being very snarky for no reason like the person's clearly trying multiple times gotcha. both of you have sorry wasn't intentional but if you yeah. want to take it personal that's also well, okay. she did do it intentionally twice. Wasn't intentional, but if you want to take it personal, you can. That's all 2024, honestly. Like, if you want to take it personal, that's your prerogative. I know where I'm coming from. I know my intentions. I know what I'm trying to do. And it's not trying to be hateful. It's not trying to be spiteful. It's not trying to be any of that. If you want to take it that way, by all means, you can. So you're going to see the world how you see it if you want to. Yes. I did not to do me it too. You said she and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh. I have Port Authority escort you out the building right this moment if you want to play that game with me. Okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. That person's not one to play with, and I don't blame them. I would be irritated too, and I'd be kind of pissed off because it's like there's so many things going on on this planet to where your number one concern is how someone is addressing you. You think you're that entitled, that privileged that someone should be mandated or someone really needs to be addressing you in the way you want to be addressed. That's not real life and that's not the real world. Truly, you need a wake-up call. That That's how privileged you are. There's people on this planet dying to be in the position that you are in right now, looking for their next meal, evading war. There's so many other worse places to be right now and you're so blessed and so fortunate that one of your main concerns is how someone is addressing you. That's honestly sad. And I give it up for the Delta worker to putting his foot down and actually just saying it for what it is. It's three days before Christmas. Do you really want to try me right now? And I'm glad people are starting to push back because that's what people need to do. There's no need for these uh, narcissists to be out here demanding this type of behavior. So let's just see what this person looks like and the type of things that they post on their social media. Can someone tell me how I went from... I clearly know what that is. I'm pretty sure you know what that is. We're gonna be respectful, and if they wanna be called she, they can be called she, but we know based off biology and just being humans, we know what that is. Being a straight boy to a gay boy to a non-binary person to a trans straight woman, I thought to, I guess I am a trans lesbian. So you don't even know what you are. You didn't went, I can't even keep up. You don't name like four or five different identities and sexualities. Yet you want to get upset because someone else can't identify what you are. When you barely even know yourself. That's sad. It truly is. And this person was apparently in um, 13 Reasons Why, the famous actor. So I guess that even adds to the entitlement. But to sit here and, and proclaim, I am a she, when shit, probably not even three months ago, you didn't even know that yourself. Who are you to demand that much respect and this much authority? You clearly, you have content up on the internet displaying how you don't even know yourself. You're still figuring yourself out. You're an adult, do you whatever. But don't get an attitude with random people and don't try to sit here and say, I am a she when you didn't even know that three months ago. Let's be real here. So major shout out to that Delta Airlines worker. They, he handled it with the grace, but we're gonna switch from Delta and go to Southwest because Southwest is giving out free flights to fat people. Hi, it's okay. Um, I'm hoping to use your um, customer of size policy today. Customer of size. Yes, I'm leaving. Yes. Thank you. You would get pre board and get an extra seat at no cost, even on fully booked flights. Now, how does that work? Why are we. 
I gotta pay $50 if my bag is over 50 pounds, but you out here giving extra seats to, to people who weigh, weigh the, you're giving an extra seat to someone who weighs probably the combined weight of two to three people, but you're making me pay extra for my bag. Nothing makes sense. Okay, thank you so much for your help. May I have a seatbelt extender, please? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Southwest is the only airline with this policy for customers of size. It should be the industry norm. No, it should not be the norm to appease and bend the knee and sit here and be super, super accommodating to oversized, unhealthy people. This world is crazy. Like we're giving out free seats on airplanes to overweight people. I'm all for you buying an extra seat because you know you are big and you're gonna take up more than enough space. I'm with that. But for an airline to sit here and give out an extra seat just because someone's big, Flying is public transportation and should be more comfortable and accessible for all people, including fat and disabled people. No. Matter of fact, make your own airline. Make a fat airline. Do something else, but don't sit here and encroach on my space just because you big. It's so difficult sometimes making, like, especially talking about, like, overweight people because I, I feel for them. I get it. Like, sometimes, like, people are just raised big and they never lose the weight, but we all are in control of our lives. And to sit here and say that everything should be this accommodating, everything should be this accessible, that's not real life. You're already getting a free seat, but now you're not even like content with that. You're moving on to the rest of the airlines and saying everyone else should be on board with this. This should be the norm. You know how many people don't even have, you don't even have the money to get on a plane? You know how many people who haven't been on a plane? Like th these people are delusional and living in, in this false reality. Life is not this easy and life is not this accommodating. We, everyone's just damn, so they, they, they forget that not even a hundred years ago, there wasn't even a refrigerator. Not even a hundred years ago, I think it was a hundred years ago, there wasn't even a, ta a tampon. Like they're so jaded to real life right now where they're just always moving on to the next, getting pissed, 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 upset, upset, upset. And it's draining on the actual normal human beings who are just trying to out here and pay their bills, exist and live a good life. To where you have people who aren't even comfortable with themselves, don't even know who they are. The loudest ones, G, the loudest ones from the non-binary people, the trans people, the overweight people, the people who are super depressed when it comes to to race and politics they're all people who are not comfortable with themselves in their lives and they're projecting that outwards and just pissed at the world that's really what it is it's a bunch of people unhappy and depressed with their own lives to where they're just taking it out on everyone else and making life just a nuisance and at some point we need to get together and push back on this and say actually no this should not be the norm actually you do need to lose weight actually you're not that victimized like th these people need a wake-up call but no one's giving them that wake-up call because they don't want to be canceled well enough of that it's time to speak up it's just so wild to me that southwest is actually doing this it was also wild is the amount of privacy that you don't have on the internet y'all know i'm down for giving people options much like one of the best options out there for a vpn called private internet access who is the sponsor of today's video you know when you go to websites and some of the ads be having your town's name or you'll be on instagram and then you'll get an ad for what you're looking at on instagram yeah that's because when you go online you're not secure everything you're doing online is public and able to be tracked but with private internet access it protects you from all that and more like mentioned in the name private internet access gives you just that privacy it acts like a safety buffer between your cell phone your laptop and the apps and websites that you're connected to it hides your ip address and safeguards the internet connection through an encrypted tunnel your traffic is private your ip is private you're not tracked you bypass ads and you bypass content wall blocks so you can watch whatever you want to watch like shows on netflix for example rick and morty and the office aren't available on netflix in the united states but if you do a quick switcheroo of your location using private internet access boom you can watch whatever you want with over 15 million customers their open source platform and over 10 years in the game they know what they're doing. So either you continue to let these apps and websites track you, or you get protected with private internet access using the link below. By using my link, piavpn.com slash Amir Odom, you'll get 83% off your private internet access VPN, which is roughly $2 a month, and you'll get an additional four months for free. So again, that is piavpn.com slash Amir Odom, and you'll be taken care of. To be really honest, there's a lot of really fat phobic people out there even in the queer community. I was a go-go dancer at a pride party and the amount of money that I made versus the amount of money that the thin people made was not the same. <sighs> see, they make it really hard to try and be nice. I, y'all know me, I want to be nice. Y'all see what I see. We know beauty standards. We know what's attractive and what's not attractive. It's not fat phobic to have a preference. It's not fat phobic to not be attracted to overweight people. It is clear and evident why, as a go-go dancer, maybe some more thin people were getting more money than you. Sometimes people don't even feel comfortable like putting the money in my underwear, but people are like really awkward with like, should I touch you, should I? And I see them 
fully touching other people. So those are little reminders that people still have a lot of work to do around their fat phobia. Entitled, again, it kind of, what I was saying before, it's just like Delulu land. Like you're extremely overweight and you have facial hair. Like you're not like the typical attractiveness body standard. And by no means, and that like, again, I'm not trying to be mean, but like don't sit here and try to say that people are fat phobic for not realizing the obvious in the mirror. Like in no way, shape or form, like how are you, how are we fat phobic because you're not attractive. Am I going crazy? Is this mean? Let me know in the comments below. I feel like these people are just delusional. Like, and again, I'm not the hottest person in the room. There's a lot of people that aren't. It's okay to be just, uh, 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 this is what's happening. You have a lot of people confusing being body positive with fat positive. Body positive is just accepting your body for what it is. And I'm gonna make a whole deep dive video on this. But being body positive is just acknowledging the normal bodies out there. You know, maybe you don't have a six pack, maybe you're just more average body. Maybe you have a little bit of a stomach or you're a little more thick. Like that's normal, that's okay to love your body for what it is. Because for so long in the industry, especially like the 90s and 2000s, it was being super, super thin. That was seen as attractive and that was an aspirable body. But body positivity is just like, no, I accept my fupa, I accept my role, I accept my stretch marks, I accept my cuts and my marks. It's all a part of my history. And I think that's totally okay to be celebrated. Like it's okay to love your body for what it is and accept it and be fine with it. But to sit here and flip that onto fat positive and say, no, I am fat, I love my body for what I am. There's nothing wrong with me. You're lying to yourself. There is something wrong with you. That's a medical emergency. The body positivity movement and the fat positive movement needs to be separate. They need to be completely separate because even for fat people, I'm all for you accepting. I don't know. Like you shouldn't be. I hate being mean, but like you shouldn't be comfortable in your skin. You should aspire to look different. You should aspire to be a little more thin. It's not healthy. Not, I'm not saying super thin is healthy either, but just like clearly you're overweight, clearly there's health complications, like you should aspire to want to lose that. That's not something you should be happy about, you know? Am I going crazy? Is that me? Like maybe that is fat shaming, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it is be good to be pushed to be healthier and not to be coddled and accepted for being overweight that's like abuse it is abuse matter of fact yes it is bad it is wrong it's literally wrong if someone's super skinny i would say something like hey you need to gain weight it's looking a little dire and if you're too big you need to lose weight there is a safety middle ground there's like models and like you know super attractive or whatever but all know what a normal body is they're super skinny and they're super big and then it's just normal and then it goes into like model looking it's okay to have a normal body and you should aspire to at least be in that realm but to sit here and be overweight no that's not that's not cute that's not it you should aspire to lose some weight is it fat shaming i guess so but it's the harsh truth big i'm big on fat shaming now of course this movement of fat acceptance is all across social media and there is this woman who is i guess a fat representative her name is samira miller she's got 1.5 million followers by the way so there is yeah definitely a following for being openly fat and <laughs> candace Candace, if you're going to try to degrade me, at least say my name correctly, <laughs> Samira. You know, I watched your whole six minute, 23 second violent discriminatory rampage toward me and other fat people. And all I have to say is, I feel sorry for you. But I mean, I feel sorry for anyone whose sense of self-worth is found in a relentless pursuit of proximity to whiteness. What does whiteness have to do with calling you out for being fat? Why is it all, it's see what I, I was just talking about at the beginning of the video. It's all the same people. It's the trans, it's the non-binaries, it's the, the fat people, the whole like, oh, racism, oppression. Like it's the whole victim mentality people that are so hooped up and rowdy about being oppressed and making everything out to just be, they're the ones making this word annoying. It's irritating. There's a nuisance to the planet. And like, we need to push back and say something about it, which I'm glad Candace was doing in this video specifically, but I don't know what whiteness has to do with this. But Candace, this message is not for you. This message is for Congress. This message is for our federal lawmakers. Where is this Martin Luther King tone coming from? Congress, my fellow leaders. Like, quit the theatrics. Fat phobia is real. 
Discrimination based on weight is real. It should be illegal. It should be criminalized. And Candace Owens is just one example. But fat phobia, it permeates every single structure of our society. Healthcare, education, entertainment, just to name a few. And it also lies at the intersection of other identities that are already federally protected from hate and bias. So why aren't fat bodies protected? Because it's a language, Amir. Because you're choosing to be fat. The laws are protecting things that people can't choose. You can't choose your gender, which, I mean, that's why we're talking about that's getting muddy now. But, you know, back when the laws were made, you can't choose your gender, can't choose your race. Some people argue about this, but I feel like you can't choose your sexuality. So it's like they're protected because it's things that people have, it's out of their control. Being fat, Miss Ma'am, is not out of your control. You control that. Well, that's because it will require you lawmakers to face your own fat phobia, to unlearn your own fat phobia. And I guarantee if any of you spent just even one minute to understand the racist, sexist, classist, ableist history. That's not enough. You gotta, you have to attach about seven different identities and problems to fat to make it an issue. Girl, you're fat. Like, uh, it's okay to be, it's, I mean, it's not okay to be fat, but if you're, you're fat, like just own up to it and then just try to lose some weight. But don't sit here and say it should be illegal to call you fat, call you what you are. You ain't skinny. We can strive to be more accepting and loving, but to a certain point, there's just some shit that just don't fly and being fat is one of them. You're dying. Here's your reminder that fat phobia is rooted in racism. As always, if you haven't read this book, go do that. The main thing to understand is that for the last 300-ish years, white folks have been marketing fatness as a black trait. And this is regardless of whether or not black people individually were actually fat. That was irrelevant. The message they spread was that black women specifically were ravenous and uncontrollable, and these barbaric traits made them fat. On the flip side, thinness was marketed as a white trait. Again, regardless of what- Miss Ma'am, you are whiter than Casper the Ghost, but how are you gonna say fat is racism? You're This shit don't make no damn sense. Fat phobia is racism. How you white and fat talking about it's racism? And what does race have to do anything with this? On the flip side, thinness was marketed as a white trait. Again, regardless of whether or not individual white people were actually thin, that was irrelevant. Yeah, black people do have bigger bodies. Like a lot of black women are just thick. Like that's not them being super overweight, it's just like that's how their body is. I get that. But what's your excuse then? Whether or not individual white people were actually thin, that was irrelevant. The idea was that white women specifically were refined and restrained, and this led them to having delicate, thin bodies. Over the years, these messages have become more subtle, but even today, they are still very prevalent in conversations around race, health, capitalism, and poverty. Girl, what? It's called having a normal body. You go anywhere on the planet, you're gonna see a, just a normal body. We can all identify what's really thin. We can all identify what's really big. But how are you gonna sit here and say that being fat phobic, it means you're being racist when you're I feel like they these videos really like make me think I'm going delusional. They make me feel like I'm crazy for having my own thoughts. And I know I'm not because like obviously you all connect with it. You let me know in the comments below that you're, you're agreeing, whatever, I get it. But when I'm watching these videos for the first time, I'm really taken aback by how serious they are. You know, like they're, they're dead ass. They actually believe the things that they're saying. They think there's nothing wrong with what they're doing or how they're living their lives. This shit blow, th this makes no sense. And again, um, be sure to subscribe. I have, have a video like going on a deep dive, talking about the whole body, body positivity movement and how the fat acceptance, oh, that's crazy. How the fat acceptance movement has hijacked the body positivity movement, much like the TQ plus has hijacked the LGB community. They're crazy. Um, but yeah, we're, we're gonna get into that. The caption for this video. I need to remind you that all bodies are good bodies. I'm sorry if all bodies are good bodies and you wouldn't be dead. Rest in peace to this person. Her name's Brittany. 
she passed away. And what's so crazy is going through Britney's TikTok feed, she understood that and she was trying to get better. She would talk openly about her food addiction and binge eating and all that, which I commend, like kudos to that. You're being a beacon of light for a lot of other overweight people and you're working to be thinner. But this is what I was talking about in like the body positivity movement, being hijacked by the fat acceptance movement and things getting a little muddied. Like, yeah, you should be, accept your body for what it is, um, like the normal bodies. But I feel like that accepting what, for your body for what it is shouldn't have been extended out to the overweight people. Because what happens is when you do accept your body for what it is and you say that, oh, I have a good body and fat people are just fat people, they are people too and nothing's wrong with them. They all die. Like it's like the fourth like fat influencer to have died, oh, like openly died, but like to have been making content talking about being fat accepting and loving your body. And now they're dead. Like I'm not, I, I I hate, like, I hate that this is, like, being seen as, you know, sometimes you're being mean or fat phobic or, you know, fat shaming, whatever, but damn, it's deadly. It's literally deadly. All bodies are good bodies. That's not a good body. The, the, the body that ended up dead. Again, rest in peace to Britney. That is sad that she passed away, but that's the problem when it comes to this whole fat acceptance movement is that they're delusional and they forget that how they are is an issue. It actually is a health crisis. It actually is a health issue that needs to be addressed. It's all insane. But thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot to have you here and have your support. Much more content on the way. We'll be talking a lot more about this body positivity movement, fat acceptance movement, tons of things here in 2024. It's gonna be an amazing year. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing my content. It means the world to me that you're liking, subscribing, and uh, can't tell you enough how grateful I am to be in this position where I am at today. Additionally, like mentioned in other videos, do know that you are in control of your life. If you are watching this and you are overweight, do know that I'm sure you hear this a lot, but you are in control of your life. And there are things that you can do to lose that weight. There are things you can do to maintain a healthy lifestyle. It's going to be a journey, but it's one that can be taken. So if you're out there and you're on this journey, I commend you. Keep going after it. I'm proud of you. But do know that like, don't get the two confused. Like this lifestyle of, of being super overweight, it's, it's not. It's not healthy and it's not going to live to you being a, having a very fruitful life. But I, I extend that out to everybody and that you are in control of your life more than you know. It's just a matter of you being focused, determined, and going out there to do what you need to do to achieve your goals and dreams. So I love you guys a ton and I will see you in the next video. Deuces.